today's video, we are going to go through all the costs of living in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I'm going to provide you with calculators and links to help you determine healthcare costs, school costs, entertainment costs, property costs, title transfer costs, and all the information you are going to need to really feel fully prepared to move to Edmonton. Hey guys, my name is Leanna Martins and I'm a local real estate agent. And if you're thinking about relocating to Edmonton, call, text me, email me, and I am happy to help you and your family transition and really feel fully educated and prepared for your move. If you're new to my channel, I publish twice weekly. So make sure that you subscribe right now so you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos. All the videos that I publish, I really try to do as much research for you as possible to save you time and to find really the best resources that are very specific to give you exactly the information that you need to make your informed decision. So with no further ado, here is the cost of living for Edmonton, Alberta, Canada in 2023 in May. So like many people looking at Edmonton as a possible relocation location for you or your family, it's really because the cost of living in general, especially for things like real estate is so much cheaper. So for example, right now, Edmonton for a single family detached home uh, for the average price right now, it's $493,000. Now for a single family detached home in Toronto right now, it's $1.5 million dollars so it's basically three times the cost and in vancouver a single family detached home is 1.9 million dollars so that makes an astronomical difference in terms of your ability to have a substantial amount more cash to put towards other things to improve your overall quality of life now sales tax so in alberta we only have uh the federal sales tax which is gst at five percent in BC, there is uh, provincial sales tax, and on top of that, there's the GST. So provincial sales tax is 7%, plus five, so it's 12%. And in Ontario, they have HSD, which is, it's all combined at 13%. So that can save you a lot and help your pennies go a lot further. Um, property taxes. So Edmonton just passed a bylaw, increasing property taxes by 4.96%. So. For the average household, uh, we're going to be paying $725 per $100,000 of the city assessed value of the home, which is an increase of $34 from 2022. So if you have a home assessed at $600,000, for example, your estimated property taxes based on that uh, are $4,350 a year. I've got a link. Uh, below to determine your taxes based on your city assessed value below for 2022. And I actually have my property taxes that I just got in. So my city assessed value is $511,000. And um, my tax rate is right here at 0.007081 for a total of $3,581. And then we have provincial education taxes, uh, which is collected on behalf of the, uh, the government of Alberta, so provincial government. And then we have provincial education requisition allowance. So that is what tops it up. So it's basically $3,581.13 plus these additional education taxes at $1,246.52. The total bill comes to $4,929.27. So you've got more than one way of paying this. You can have this amortized into your mortgage if you'd like, or you can arrange to pay it directly with the city of Edmonton. Also, there is something called a title transfer fee in Alberta. So other Canadian provinces have a land transfer tax, BC, for example, but Alberta does not. Alberta has a title transfer fee, which is substantially lower, and it's handled by our real estate lawyers um, upon the discharge of title when you purchase or sell a property in Alberta. So uh, for example, for a $300,000 mortgage, it's $290. So click the link below to determine the exact costs for you. Utility costs. In Alberta, you're gonna need electricity, natural gas, waste drainage, water treatment. So in Alberta, our utilities are privatized. So there is competition and there's also selection for you. 
For a complete up-to-date list, there are currently 12 different service providers with the most popular being Epcor and Max Atco and Direct Energy. So the link below is gonna help you set up your utilities and also compare pricing between different providers and companies. So why don't I take you through my personal utility costs for my house. So I've got about a 1200 square foot bungalow. Um, and in Alberta also, the difference is that we only count above ground square footage. So it's about 2400 square feet total uh, because this and the corresponding square footage in the basement. So for me, utility costs in Alberta have gone up substantially over this last year. And so my last bill right here, I use direct energy for my natural gas. And then I use Epcor because Epcor really it's because they bundle the services, so it makes it quite easy. So for example, um, Epcor will give you your electricity, um, they give you your water, uh, wastewater treatment, drainage, and waste services all bundled into one bill. So here is my bill for April, $326 for uh, electricity, water, drainage, and waste services. And my last bill for May is up, which you would think is odd. So 326, it was up substantially by like 75 bucks. The new charges are $401. And it was the electric energy. So it could have been a space heater. And water, my water costs were up as well. So that can give you an idea. So really you should be budgeting, I would say, Honestly, 350 to 450, depending on the time of the season, because winter, your utility costs go up substantially. And they're all always fluctuating. So at the time of filming this, it is May 2023. Um, and direct energy, for example, this one went up substantially. Like my energy costs have doubled. So it used to be maybe 75 to $100. Then it went to 125 And this last bill is $255. And that's for natural gas. So I hope that that's supportive. Now, let's talk about the Edmonton economy, jobs and employment. So Edmonton as a whole really does have a strong economy with the primary industries being oil and gas, healthcare, construction, post-secondary education, and manufacturing markets. Because of the strength of those, Edmonton really does have a low unemployment rate and it's projected to create another half a million jobs in the next few years in Edmonton, Alberta. The average GDP growth is 2% and we are expecting to maintain that steady growth until the year 2027. Click the link below for economic reports and forecasts and Edmonton's economic sectors explain. Gas costs. So gas in Edmonton is always cheaper than Calgary because of the level of competition and our proximity to refineries. So we are on average cheaper than Vancouver by about 63 cents a liter and cheaper than Toronto by about 28 cents a liter. So our current gas prices of May, 2023 is $1.29, knowing that fluctuates. Healthcare and coverage costs. So in Alberta, we have Alberta Healthcare and it's free. It's provided by the province for your basic need. That is anything considered necessary, like a family doctor visit, a psychiatry visit, hospital stay where beds are available, necessary surgery, and blood testing. There's only partial coverage for things like eye exams, dental, chiropractic, massage, and podiatry. And Alberta Healthcare does not cover private or semi-private hospital rooms, ambulance services, Medivac helicopter services, dental, orthodontics, prescriptions, psychological services, eye care glasses, and more. So in Alberta, you can purchase supplementary coverage for those items if your employer doesn't cover it with a healthcare plan. Uh, and a, a common one that, that we use that I've used myself is Alberta Blue Cross and others. So I've got links for those below. Uh, for Alberta Healthcare for you to do a little more research specifically uh, if you have an area of concern uh, and also Blue Cross if your your employer doesn't cover anything in addition and have a health care plan for you and that's something that you're going to need to top up for example let's say that you are uh, self-employed education 
So education is provided by the province, but there are school fees and then there's also additional fees depending on where you have your children or child uh, placed. So Edmonton has a very diverse and inclusive educational community. We have specialized programming for preschool. Um, we have art schools, athletic academies, faith-based schools, First Nations, Métis, Inuit programming. Uh, we have American Sign Language, Arabic, Chinese, Mandarin, German, French, Hebrew, Spanish uh, speaking programs. And then we also have alternative teaching philosophies like Kigido, Caraway, and STEM programming. So there really is so much available just depending on the values of you as parents and what you're looking for for your children. So fees vary widely from district to district and can be anywhere from $27 annually to $350 or more depending on the additional um, fees uh, to cover the specific costs associated. For example, if it's a sports academy and there's travel. Uh, so click the link below to find a school of your choice and associated costs or contacts uh, to find out directly. Rental costs. Uh, so right now in Edmonton, an average price for a studio apartment is about $980. For a one bedroom, you are looking at $1,260 and for a two bedroom, about $1,680 on average for the rental market. Now cell phones, we all need a cell phone and we're all gonna need internet. So for cell phones, the best network coverage in Alberta is widely considered TELUS, Bell, Kudo and Virgin. Um, but there's approximately 16 different providers of cell phones in Edmonton. So click the link below and you can actually compare prices, plans, con contracts, and phones directly. Me personally, I use TELUS uh, and for internet, the largest providers are TELUS, Shaw, Rogers. Uh, but there's many smaller providers that are very competitive and honestly worth investigation. So click the link below as well to compare for yourself and decide what you think is best. Now, food costs. So food costs in Alberta can really be pricey, and especially since inflation, it's gone up substantially. So the average food cost in Edmonton is anywhere from $200 to $400 a week. My personal cost for my family, I've just tracked this last month, and it's a family of three, is $800 to $1,000 a month, but that's based largely on a keto, whole food, and partially organic diet. So. So the, the costs for my food are up easily 30% just because of the choices that I make in terms of health and nutrition. So you got to keep that in mind as well. So I do think like two to $400 a week is a good range and it kind of covers all types of uh, diets and, and preferences for your family. Transit costs. So we have, over the last few years, our previous mayor uh, put in a fantastic, and it's currently still under construction, an amazing transit system. And it's really modernized our city, which is so wonderful. Uh, and the transit costs for a basic fare is $3.50. For a family day pass, it's $10.25. For a monthly bus pass, it's, a monthly bus pass is $73 and an annual fare for the entire year is $385. So click below for city bus pass information. Entertainment. So let's just talk fast food, for example. Fast food, if you're gonna go up with your family, they're saying averaging about $12 each for a combo meal. Um, but you know kids always want extra stuff over and above that. So I would say 12 to $17 per kid. Uh, let's say that you want to go out with your loved one, your baby, for a drink. Domestic beer is about seven bucks each. Import beer is eight dollars. Let's say you're gonna grab a Starbucks at lunch or on the weekend with a friend. It's five fifty for a basic tea, for example, or a basic coffee. Um, but if you get the fancy stuff, you know, honestly, it's like eight to twelve dollars. Uh, pop and water, on average, two fifty to three fifty, depending on where you are. Now we're wrapping this up with things like gym memberships. So a gym membership on average across the board is about $65 a month. Uh, but that can range honestly from discount gyms, like 20 bucks a month, dirt cheap, uh, all the way up to 120 or more for executive memberships in health clubs. 
Thank you for watching this video. I really hope that I provided you a ton of useful information for you to budget and prepare your family. Make sure that you subscribe now to not miss any more videos. And if you're thinking about making a move to Edmonton, you know what you gotta do. You gotta call me first and I will be the first to support you and help you with all the information that you need really to make an informed decision and be fully prepared for your move. Uh, click on my next video and you can learn more about what it's like to live in Edmonton. I will see you in the next video.